Hi there, this is Judy Marie from the DG Marie Trust in South Africa. You are about to watch a video presentation which will explain some important concepts about measurement in order to monitor and evaluate social programs. This video forms part of other resources offered on our Growing Confidence website, which is aimed at assisting non-profit organizations to develop their monitoring and evaluation systems. You will find this video most useful if you are familiar with some of the terminology used in ME planning and if you understand the basics of indicators. You can find all this information on the Growing Confidence website. If you are watching on YouTube, we provide the link to the website in the video description below. How will you know that your program has achieved the outcomes and goals that you set out to achieve? You are going to measure it. That's how. Measurement is basically the methodology that will be used to answer questions around whether your program has achieved or are achieving its outcomes or impact. And if this involves change in a social situation, as it generally does, whether your program has caused or contributed to this change. Per introduction, just a few things to keep in mind about measurement. The first is that it varies in difficulty. For indicators related to your outputs, those are the products and services produced through your program. It will mostly involve systematic counting of these products and services. And ideally, you should develop these tools and data collection methodologies yourself because they will be closely related to the specific operations and management of your program or organization. For some outcomes with indicators that are more complex to measure, for example, those that illustrate behavior change in people, it might be best to consult with a researcher that has experience using different types of measures and research methodologies. Remember that measurement is per definition empirical. This means it is knowledge that is derived from observation or experimentation, and it's not based on theory or logic or anything that we're thinking. Although we all believe that we are doing good work because we see the difference that it makes in the lives of some of our beneficiaries, we are subjective. For many different reasons, we don't always see things the way they really are, and we often struggle to see the whole picture. So showing something empirically basically means that you are scientifically or more objectively proving that you are achieving your outcomes. Also keep in mind that subjectivity don't only apply to us, the program implementers. There is also a difference between our beneficiaries' perceptions and information based on facts, which would be objectively verifiable. And you should keep this in mind when measuring something. For example, you may come up with very different answers when you ask people if they think they've learned something versus when you actually test them on that knowledge or skill. So what do we measure for monitoring and evaluation? This can be a little technical, so I'm going to talk slowly and just rewind and listen again if you need to. Firstly, we generally try to measure indicators that are linked to an outcome that talks about establishing or doing something new for the first time. For example, a program motivating students studying to become teachers that go and teach in rural areas would count the number of student teachers that applied for and accepted positions in rural areas after participating in the program. Since there is no comparison involved over time or against others because they're doing something new, you should be able to measure this one time in a single instance. Or the next thing falling in the same category that we try to measure is indicators that are linked to an outcome that talks about achieving a minimum standard. For example, people that participate in a training program need to achieve a minimum, minimum of 60% in an exam that would allow them to graduate then. Since you are not comparing over time, but against a standard or benchmark, you again should be able to measure this one time in a single instance. This type of measurement, where we only need to measure once and don't need to compare over time or between groups, is called non-experimental research. Now, non-experimental research can illustrate that something took place and also describe the details of it. It can also tell you whether this occurrence is associated with the occurrence of something else, for example, your program activities. Although it might allow you to say that two things or more are happening at the same time, 
non-experimental research cannot say that one of these things caused the other one to happen. So let's look at the example. Non-experimental research for a reading for enjoyment campaign might allow us to find out what percentage of people are reading books. We can see the types of books that they are reading. We can see whether it's males or females that are reading the books. We can see the age distribution of the readers. We can also see that the, all these trends are happening at the same time that we ran a public service announcement on the radio. And about this public service announcement, we know through non-experimental research how many people listened, the age distribution of the listeners, the geographical area, etc. So, although we now know that these two things happened at the same time, and we can describe each of these in detail, and it is encouraging to see that these trends are happening at the same time of the public service announcement, a critical person will tell you that many other things could have happened that could have caused these trends. If we wanted to say that our program contributed or were the cause of these changes, we need to do experimental research, which we will talk about in just a moment. Next on the list of what we try to measure with monitoring and evaluation is increase, improvement or decline over time change, basically. The images that you see represent a small part of larger case studies compiled by a local NGO called Children of the Dawn, who tries to improve the lives of orphans and vulnerable children on a number of indicators, including health. If your outcomes speak about an increase, improvement or decline, you will need to compare your indicator at at least two different instances over time. It thus means that your measurement will entail some kind of pre- and post-testing or knowledge about the baseline conditions. We call such a process of comparing over time quasi-experimental research. Quasi means it is almost like, so it's actually sort of experimental research. With pre- and post-testing and comparison to baseline, you are comparing the participants against themselves before and after the program. If you are testing for both objective factors and not only for the perceptions of people, for example, you are actually testing the knowledge of participants and not only asking them whether they think they've learned something, you should be able to effectively say whether change has occurred or not. If you can be 100% sure that the program was the only factor influencing the changes that you measure over time, this could mean that your program is the cause of the change but you will find out that it is really hard to be 100% sure that your program was the only factor influencing changes, especially the longer time you wait before you do your post-testing. Last on the list of what we try to measure through monitoring and evaluation are the questions around program efficiency and impact. You measure the impact or efficiency of your program by establishing what the status of things would have been otherwise if your program was never implemented. Researchers call this the counterfactual, which is represented by the second picture on this slide where the women and child are getting dirty water from a stream compared to the community who were part of an intervention to install water pumps powered by the power of children having fun on a merry-go-round. However, I don't know for a fact that the community with the play pump would have struggled like the community in the second picture. How things would have been is clearly impossible to measure directly. It can only be inferred. One way of inferring this is by comparing the outcomes of those who participated in the program against those who did not participate. You can do this by either doing experimental or quasi-experimental research. Besides for pre- and post-testing, there are a variety of quasi-experimental research designs that could be used to compare groups of people. The difference between quasi-experimental research and experimental research is that in quasi-experimental research, the groups are pre-assigned based on some characteristic or quality. For example, mostly programs are only evaluated after the program has been implemented for a while. Thus, the research group will inevitably be the group that has participated in the program with their specific characteristics targeted by the program. 
The challenge will be to find a control group of people who did not participate, but would closely resemble the participants if they have not received the program. With true experimental design, the assignment of groups are random. In other words, your selection is like winning a lottery where every person only has one ticket. Thus, each person has an equal chance of being selected. And this is done before the program is implemented. The program is then implemented only in one group and the comparison of the two groups is done when appropriate. Although randomized evaluations are the gold standard in terms of evaluation, we know that many organizations don't start with impact evaluation in mind, but rather with a passion to assist people who need help. Quasi-experimental designs are dependent on more assumptions than true experimental design. For example, that non-participants are identical to participants and that they were equally likely to enter the program before it started. And if these assumptions hold, this type of research gives us the correct answers to our evaluation questions. There are ways to do quasi-experimental research that will reduce the risk of biased answers. On our website, we provide access to a useful chart, which was created by JPEL which explains the different designs and the assumptions that underlie them. We hope that this video presentation has assisted you to understand the basic concepts around measuring the progress and effectiveness of social programs. You can also read and download or print the text for this video on the Growing Confidence website. On the site, we take you systematically through the information that you need to know and the steps that you need to take to establish the effectiveness of your program. Take a look. Thank you for watching and listening.